right, guys, at the time of this video, happy July 4th weekend for the 249th anniversary of this country in America here. And we are going to continue on doing some cars as much as possible. I'm trying to catch up on my schedule and get all the easy stuff out of the way. So we've got this car over here, which if you saw the last video, the, um, what was it, the Olds Cutlass that was owned by the feisty 84 four-year-old lady, remember her? Well, this is her daily driver right here. So that Cutlass was a car she just has sitting around on her property for whatever reason. This is her daily driver. This is a 2004 Jeep Rubicon. This is a really cute little car. She clearly likes green. All of her vehicles, all four of them that she has are green. Uh, really pretty small. It's kind of like a sidekick almost in size here. And one other thing, it was a little surprising to me, only for a minute though, it's a manual transmission. <laughs> so 84-year-old woman driving the stick. Um, man, she's, she's uh, quite an interesting character. We'll have to get her on video sometime, I think. But what the complaint is here is she only has two speeds that work on the blower fan for her heat and AC. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick. All right, we're just gonna turn the car to on. We're gonna come over here to the HVAC here. And uh, looks like it's on, but not running. Second position doesn't work. Oh, there it goes. Third works, fourth works. So the first two positions don't work. I have a very good idea of what's going on. This is gonna be a very easy fix, but true to the nature of this channel, we're going to understand exactly what the problem is here and how we can test the part before replacing it. But uh, this is going to be, um, either it's gonna need a new head unit or a new resistor pack. Uh, we'll explain that. But basically what we've got is an open circuit in a resistor series here is what we're gonna have. There is no question in my mind about that. It's just a matter of what is required to fix it here, but we wanna diagnose it first. All right, so the first step is understanding the basic electrical design of how a system like this would work, that you have increasing speeds as you move up your fan switch knob there. So of course, other designs this is a 2004, so this is gonna be pretty basic. Newer designs are gonna be entirely computer controlled. That would be a totally separate thing than what we're covering here. But this is kind of a nice uh, general thing to know for older vehicles. And typically what we're gonna have is a series of resistors here. Let me get my marker to work here, hang on. All right, I think that's all right. So we'll have a series of resistors. We're just gonna put three of them here, for example. And then we're gonna have our fan motor. There's a symbol for a motor, all right? This here, we'll have a little terminal there, little terminal there, little terminal there, and a little terminal there. Definitely an oversimplified drawing for sure. And there will be sometimes some variations with this, but in general, the concept is gonna be the same here. All right, motor is gonna go off to a ground, typically just to a chassis ground. And what we are going to have now is we're going to have a little dial switch here that ultimately is connected in some way to a 12 volt positive source here, all right? And now you can kind of see the, the basic design of this. And of course there can be variations of this, but the idea here is that we put 12 volts through this switch and this is fan setting one, two, three, and high, maybe four, all right? And when we're at position one, we're putting our 12 volts here at the beginning of the resistor series. So now we're passing through three resistors before we get to the motor. This is gonna cause very high resistance, very low current flow, which means that our fan is gonna be spinning kind of slow, right? But then if we move the dial here, 
and we spin that dial so that now we're putting the voltage to the second resistor, we're bypassing this first one. Now we only have two resistors that we're passing through. It's going to go a little bit faster because it's got a third less resistance and it's going to have more current flow, which is going to move that motor faster. So now we've got our speed setting too. Now you can see as we move along, if we move to speed setting three, we're going to be at fairly high fan speed because now we only have one resistor that we're passing through. And of course, ultimately, if we move all the way over to the high speed, we directly put that 12 volts right to the motor with no resistance, the highest fan speed. So that's typically the basic design for how these systems work. Now, the thing is, is that typically in most systems, this resistor pack here, this resistor series will be in the head unit when you're actually doing the dial changes. However, there are some cars, and I know I've seen it in Dodges before, where this resistor pack is actually located separate somewhere under the dashboard, and you can service this resistor pack and replace it pretty easily. The other thing is maybe the resistor pack isn't the problem. Now, we can be pretty safe. If you go to any video and look at how to replace the head unit or resistor pack, we're gonna look up which this has. Yeah, you, you can pretty much, hey, so not all the fan speed work, you replace wherever the resistors are and you fix it, sure, of course. And you wouldn't need to know this and you can just stupidly go ahead and do the repair and you'll be successful and that's fine. On this channel, we like to know what we're doing. One of the things is that if we look on this simple design like this, there really isn't much explanation for what's happened here other than we have an open in the resistor pack here so that when we're set at number one, we have an open circuit. Set at number two, we have an open circuit. But then when we move to number three or four, we have continuity. So almost guaranteed what's happened here is our resistor pack has an internal open in it, and we can probably actually test that. The other thing that can be very useful on more modern cars, we could use a scan tool and we would be able to look at the HVAC computer, which this car I'm pretty sure isn't going to have, but we could look at the HVAC computer and these connections, instead of being made mechanically through the switch, would be made digitally through the engine, uh, not the engine computer, but through either a BCM module or an HVAC module. And on the scan tool, you would be able to read the settings that the dial is at. So for example, if we set it to setting number one, but on the scan tool, we see that it's set to zero. And then we set to number two, and it's still set to zero. There is some input problem then. There's gonna be some kind of input issue and replacing this resistor pack probably isn't going to fix it, right? Now, if on the scan tool, we see that you change it from one, two, three, and four, and on the scan tool, you see one, two, three, and four, but only three and four work, we know that there is something after the input. So it's uh, very important to know your design so that you replace only what needs to be fixed. On this car, this is going to be a resistor pack for sure. So let's go ahead and look up where this is. All right, so we've got a wire diagram for the HVAC system here. We can see this is clearly not computer controlled. Everything's pretty mechanical here. There's our blower motor right there. And uh, we can see that this actually is going to be a different design than what I said, very slightly though. So really the main difference here, there's our resistor series. We can see it says under right side of dash on HVAC module. So we are fortunate this is going to be a replaceable component. I've seen these before where we can replace just this resistor pack uh, under the dashboard somewhere. It's probably under the glove box. We'll take a look. But we can see the design looks very similar right down to having actually exactly three resistors as a matter of fact. That was just serendipitous on this model. Of course, the more speeds that you have on the switch, the more resistors you would have. Most of them that I've seen have four speeds. But what's different here is we can see because I saw power up at the top and also in general on a wire diagram, your positives are gonna be up at the top and your grounds will be at the bottom. 
we can see this is going to be a power coming in here actually. So what the switch is going to do, which is going to be right in here, let's move down a bit. The switch is going to control the ground. It's not going to be a power. It's going to be a ground. Okay. So if we look here, there's our low position one, position two and high. And if we follow this, once we turn on one of the heat things, we go to a ground. So on my design that I had, the switch was putting the power to the correct position in the actual design here for this Jeep. It puts a ground to the correct position. Same theory. It's just in reverse. So if we look here, it's uh, defaulted at high. Let's see if we can fit a little more of this on the screen here. There we go like that. Okay. So with it defaulted at high, we see we've got our power coming to the motor. So this is ultimately going to lead up to power through the motor here, but it needs a ground. All right. It has to have a ground. In this case, the ground is going to go directly through here is as long as we have either the mix heater vent on. If it's off, we end the circuit here and nothing will run. But as long as we've got some type of heat chosen on here, we're going to provide a ground directly through here. It's not going to go through the resistors because it's going to take the easiest path and that's going to be through no resistance. Now we flip that switch, move that over to M2. Now the electricity can't go this way because it's going to be an open here, right? Our switch here is going to be moved to M2. So it's going to stop right there. So now with our switch at M2, the ground path is this way through this first resistor. So that's going to be a fairly high speed. We see that it's M2 low is all the way at the end here at low. If we move this switch all the way to low, we now connect here. Our ground is now provided here at the end of the resistor pack. Our electrical pathway is going to go through all three resistors through our low switch. And the fan, of course, is going to go really, really slow. So uh, the main thing, though, we have found out that this is underneath the uh, right side of dash. So let's go take a look and see if we can find it. All right. Well, how easy is this? It is if you remove the glove box, I was able to match up the wires on the connector, but it is that guy right there with the white writing on it. We see there's one bolt here holding it in. Looks like about an eight millimeter. I'll bet there's another one underneath it. Yeah, there is. I can feel it actually. So how easy is that? Two bolts. Let's remove that resistor pack, unplug it, and let's check it. All right, guys, got the part out here. Oops, sorry. There we go. And uh, just like literally a minute to remove this thing. I love these super easy repairs. All right. How do you like my new check engine light neon sign, by the way? Pretty cool, huh? All right. So we're going to go ahead and test this thing real quick. I'm just going to grab my DVOM here. Let's take a look. All right. I'm going to assume these are numbered one, two, three, and four. So obviously if we go between one and four here, we're not going to measure anything because we definitely have an open. We probably will be okay between one and two. Um, well, actually interesting. We, we are not, we don't measure anything between one and two. So this thing is messed up. It looks like we got an open between one and two and two and three, but we know for a fact that we have continuity between three and four because position three works. So we know we've got to have continuity here. And if we look, we do, I've got the uh, meter set to like a 20 mega ohm setting. So the point is we've got continuity there. I guess we could try to measure it. it looks like we've got, um, well, it's actually kind of interesting. It, if you move this thing a little bit, it actually wavers a, a lot. So, so there is definitely an internal failure with this thing for sure. Yeah, there totally is. Um, okay. So obviously this thing is broken. We need a new one. So let me go grab a new one and then we're going to measure that new one resistor right here. Just going to cover this up with some cloth just because I don't want to take any chance of marring up the surface. We're not squeezing this vice here. I'm just holding this in place. 
All right, and now all we need to do, we're just gonna keep our meter. I've got it set like 20 million ohms. I don't really care what the ohms are. I just know that we've gotta have continuity from one end to the other. So if we go from one end to the other, we have continuity as you can see now on the meter. Remove, touch the pin, where's the pin? Right there. All right, so you can see that we do have continuity across all of our terminals. This is going to fix this Jeep. Let me go ahead and put that new part in and let's test it. All right, time to get back to work. All right, got our new part in literally like a, a two minute repair, honestly. Turn the key to on and we already have success. Let me close the door because I can hear the low fan run. Probably can't hear that. Let's go to position number two. You can surely hear that. That's definitely working. Let's go to three. Definitely higher. And four is really high. And one barely runs. Okay, that is a fix. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you again very soon.